Hello, welcome to the Inquisitor's office on board of the Void ship. We'll speak about heresy. Heresy is metagaming. Metagaming is kind of boring and this game was never really balanced and they're really trying to balance the game but I don't think they'll succeed because they just made too many mistakes. So, my builds will be 75% meta. So that means you'll have enough room to choose between fun or meta. But the goal of the video is also to kind of explain that players have a choice and they they can follow the general guide for the certain character or main character or companion, set companions. Or they can just go for the meta or the fun or they can just see the synergy. I think it's very hard to notice or realize how a character should be built or could be built just by looking at the game and saying, hey, that's a good idea. No, I think the problem with the game is the developers made a lot of choices kind of irrelevant and a lot of choices too strong to be ignored. I'll just show you how to build the characters in a very efficient way so you can finish the game on unfair but still have fun. So we'll speak about the characters, their archetypes, their active skills, their talents, everything. And then we'll show you the first archetype, how I level them up. Also speak about the skills, the stats, and the inventory items that I use for them, meaning what is the most efficient way to use the items in the first chapter, or basically the entire chapter. And then also show you how to level up their archetypes, their second archetypes, how to choose the second archetypes, and a little bit about them and some tips, and how I'll be playing the game from now on. Now, my main character is a commissar that can shoot a lot. That's his basic deal, he shoots a lot. At all costs, he's kind of like a waste, so... It's not efficient, but it's also not useless. I think you can use this in many situations. For example, you shoot a burst, a big burst, and then you just shoot again. So you hit an enemy, so you, the enemy who will kill... Or let's just, let's just say like this. You have a chance to give another ally two action points, but it's kind of hard to use, so most of the times you'll not be using it anyway. It's a commissar that can shoot a lot of bolter shells. So run and gun re reveal and slaughter. Rapid fire and dash. I think dash is important to reposition yourselves and shoot at more targets, plus not hit your own allies. So that's why I chose it. As for the talents, let's go over them a little bit. Rapid reload is a must have, because it will be good for the entire combat pass. Sometimes you'll use all of the ammunition in your magazine in a single turn. It's amazing. Unpredictable critical hit chance stacks very well and it's also scale. it also scales very well with the end of the game. Rapid fire self-explanatory more iron against your enemy so more shooty better for our mastery well basically 20 percent harder to dodge plus the armor penetration and then of course increase the fire rate muzzle velocity well i think this is a mistake i shouldn't have taken it but at the same time it's good that it increases the damage of the first hit which if it crits it can deal a lot of damage and again the first hit of each burst. So even if you hit, let's say, three of the burst shots, even if you hit with only one, that burst will do a lot more damage. So it will make the overall damage of the character much better. So sometimes a single hit can mean you deal enough damage as two hits or three hits, depending on the hit or the crit or so on. Again, it's a mistake that I chose it, but it helps a lot with the character's overall DPS. Now over here, you can see some of them, so I'll not speak about everything. What is never stop shooting and why do I like it? Basically you have a chance, like it says over here. Never stop shooting gives you a chance to refund your action points for the first attack of the turn. What does that mean? Well, let's say for example you use rapid fire and you shoot an enemy with 8 shots. If you kill him, it's good. But you also have a chance to gain your action points back. So 10 stacks means 10% chance. That the first attack of the round will not cost any action points. So basically the character will receive a free attack every 2 or 3 turns. We'll, we'll speak about how you gather the never stop shooting stacks now. After we get to this. Water weapon just because it's a fun weapon to use and it's kind of like lore wise. It's it's interesting to use and it's also... Again, it's, it's also about the role playing aspect of the game. So my execution is a mistake. I shouldn't have taken it. Because, like I said, at all cost is not used that often and you can only use it once per combat. Which is a weird thing to have, but I guess it can become overpowered. Yeah. Once per combat. The small execution was probably a mistake, but it will be useful much later into the game and it will scale very well into the game as well. I'll, you'll see why. 
Head of Steel. Basically, since the character cannot protect himself very well, he'll get more dodge, more bonus dodge when he shoots a lot of bullets, and also every burst attack can grant an additional 10 stacks of never stop shooting. So, you can use burst, then you can use run and gun, use another burst. So, that basically means 20 stacks of never stop shooting. So, that's 20% chance next turn to not use an attack, to not use action points when you deal the first attack. Pass the board, the dodge, which is great, never stop believing. When you actually use the never stop shooting skill, passive skill, you lose all of the stacks. But if you have this one, never stop believing, it will basically be 20% chance to use the skill or 20 stacks of never stop shooting. So you will always have at least 20. So that means every round you have a chance about 25% or more not use the action points for the first attack and family are kicked back. Well, this is a bit of a mixed thing. I'm not sure. I, I shouldn't have taken it, but it helps with our overall character build. Basically, if a weapon does 10 to 14 damage, then it's divided by 50% or reduced by 50%, which is 5. So basically, at any point of the game, I will have about 75% chance to trigger never stop shooting. But it gets a little tricky. Because if you use two rounds to burst, and if you have some other ways to get them, or if you kill the enemies and then use the Evelyn Slaughter to refresh the... Okay, so this is a problem. It removes the wounded effect. What does that mean? You can use run and gun again. So basically, if you have more action points or if you use everything to the maximum, if you kill enemies, killing an enemy will give you 10 stacks of never stop shooting. So if you kill, let's say, 3 enemies, plus you use 2 burst attacks, that's 50% chance next turn to get the trigger on the never stop shooting. So that means this character will shoot a lot and it's super fun to use just because of the <laughs> impressive amount of firepower he can have. And this will only get better with time. So this is, these are all the choices, so you can see them a little easier. Now let's speak about the character itself. The character itself will use a lot of ballistic skill, but I'll also level, I'll give him 45 strength because he needs that for the power armor proficiency, which will be useful later. The first chapter there is no power armor, but you need this. So I just gave him so I have something to work for the future. The skill he uses, usually a character will use one or two skills, but the skills over here that he will use is coercion. And that's kind of important. Because of his background and because of his other bonuses, it will go up to 60, which is quite impressive. Other than that, as you can see, he has 30 dodge reduction, which is super important because with his high stats, he will be able to hit a lot more than you think. Because a lot of people complain, hey, you cannot hit a lot of bursts. No, you can hit. As for the item themselves, pinpoint visor. He'll basically kill a lot of trash enemies and will get a lot of stacks of never stop shooting. So he'll basically shoot and handle all of the trash almost on his own. Carapace Chesspray, just because I like to have dodge, later on I'll have to replace it. And this is based on dodged. I don't know. Basically, if he doesn't move, he gets more stats. Also, I think if you play it in the beta, you'll get these two items for free. Otherwise, I'm not sure if you can get them or not. Basically, 50% extra stats to everything. Modified Bolter, just because I like the extra rate of fire. The Bolter will do normal, Bolter will do more damage, but it has free rate of fire. So again, it's for fun. The Arc Rifle over here, it's also for fun. You might as well just put another Sniper Rifle over here, but I just like to use it for fun. Again, fun, fun, fun. No meta. Meta is useful, but not all the time. Five Spine is braces. I don't, for, I don't remember where I got this, but it's super useful for this character. Just because he shoots so much... You will deal damage to a lot of enemies, especially boss enemies. So that means the boss will have, or the elite enemy will have minus 15 weapon skill, minus 15 ballistic skill, which is huge. He can also heal, let's say, two or three enemies in an attack, so all of them will be debuffed. Great. Some grenades. Now, Idira. What is Idira and how do you use her? Some people say she's very weak, some people say she's very good. I just like to use Idira as a buffer and as a damage dealer, but again, she's much better as a debuffer. Just debuff and the other ones can do theirs, but that makes her very boring. So she'll be able to analyze and expose weakness for warning iron up just because I need her to buff my melee characters like Abelard, Heinrich, and later the Wolf. You know what I'm talking about. And also Dominate, because it's a super useful ability to have. It's one of the best abilities in the game. 
Now, if you want to know what would be the better choice, so you don't get this one, you should really, 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 really get sensory deprivation because it's a huge debuff that can work on bosses on elite enemies, which can help you. But at the same time, think about it: you only fight bosses a very limited amount of times. So basically, ninety percent of the game will be better off with this one if you like to use melee. But ten percent when you're fighting a boss, you want to use that other one. Uh, talents. Dismantling attack. Basically, of course, the penalties are here. And the target cannot move. And instant exposure, of course, because analyze enemies will always be super, super useful. For damage or for just using the exposed weakness, so you reduce the enemy's armor and parry and dodge. Usually, you want to use this exposed weakness because she doesn't really deal that much damage. So, remember to use exposed weakness on the boss or something like that. Don't really attack the boss directly. As for the origin talents, we have a lot of interesting things. We'll speak about the bonuses from the paths of the or from the reputation in a separate video because that's just too much to go through in a single video. Advice and guidance, just because I like her to be a buffer as well, good for warning and biomancy. Second side for increased range of her skills. Biomancy, like I said, it might be a mistake, it depends on how you view things. Bio Physical distortion is great because even if you give her a sniper rifle and she shoots someone at range, even though if she doesn't do damage, she will still apply this with all damage. All, all of the attacks. So even if she shoots a pistol, a flamer, I'm not sure if the flamer, I never tried that. But let's just say most of the guns she will fire will apply this, which will be amazing because that means in two or three turns every enemy will die anyway. So you can just keep them away or use dominate. Super fun to use. Change vitality. The problem is that toughness doesn't stack with toughness with the, I don't know it's a bit of a mixed bag so this is the problem the developer should have made it super super clear from what I know temporary hit points cannot come from two sources it will just take the source that adds the more uh, hit points so it's very hard to gauge and see how this works if this works or not but I just put it over here so <laughs> people will have more toughness and just for the buffs dominate I like I said you can just make enemies come out of the cover or move them closer or move them closer for grenades or position them in such a way you can use over penetration to hit two or three enemies at the same time again a lot of useful things weight bringer armor penetration metal breach mental breach of course you want the enemy to have less chances to resist your tests unnatural luck so basically this is just resisting a critical hit so it becomes a normal hit if you're going to hit you give it to, let's say, Abelard, he gets hit by an attack that will do 50 damage, but the damage will only be 25. Basically, it can save one of your companions, that's why I like it. Archetype view over here. Now, let's speak about the character itself. It should be based on willpower. Again, the problem is that some of the attacker skills will use intelligence, or operative skills will related to the weakness and exposure will use intelligence. But most of the cycle skills will use willpower. Sometimes fellowship, but willpower is any more. It's her most important stat. As for her skills, she'll have lore of the warp. There are not many characters that have warp lore, so you might as well give give a special attention to this one. Logic is also pretty good. Now, as for the items, there are not a lot of items you can equip on her anyway. It doesn't matter that much anyway, so. Kind of like a weird situation over here. So warp your goggles for the bonus to warp. Warp lord that is. Uh, Fortress world mesh vest. That's because she can have more toughness and more ranged. More armor against ranged attacks. Psychic stack for the lightning. And also this is kind of fun as well to use. Consign. The next hit against the target will be a cri automatic critical attack. So you can debuff an enemy or a someone, a boss, and elite with this one. The next attack will be a critical. And you can kind of use that to your advantage from many, many other ways. She becomes quite tanky for whatever reason. I have the Starker Gloves on her just because I didn't know what to give her and the other characters already have their own things. 
Also give her gas cloud, fire grenade and frag grenades Because if she cannot really fight so well At least she can throw a grenade, that would be very fun Cassia, oh Okay, Cassia was always the strongest character in the game Just because she can use skills She can use psychic powers and she can also buff Allies so much that it's unbelievable So Cassia is the best character in the game without a doubt And the developers will never manage to balance her No matter how hard they try Let's just get straight into it. So her main ability is be voice of command, bring it down. Finest tower, of course. Super fun to have. No attack limit. Think about it. So you can use an attack four times. A sniper can use four attacks with the normal shots. Ah, yes. That's going to be fun. Also, take aim. Now, this is a bit of a discussion over here. So let me expose my arguments. You can, instead of take aim, it's much better to take a hero of authority because the enemy... Well, let's just say it like this. It will be much better to stack the buffs on your allies than to do something else. Plus, that extraction point is very useful. Plus, the increase in resolve will be massive because you can trigger your full momentum faster. But at the same time, you'll just have other situations where you cannot hit a sniper or you might want to give take, take aim to a character that cannot really aim and cannot really hit. It will have double the effective distance, so that means you can shoot a plasma gun as a rifle with maximum accuracy. And additionally, the damage cannot be reduced by, again, it's a lot of talking back and forth, but this is 90% of the fight, you will need to use this skill once or twice, just because the snipers will mostly kill your buffers. Or sometimes the character, an enemy will just be so hard to kill that it will annoy you to, it will annoy you to no end. That's why I took this one. It's probably better to take that other one that I showed you, but I like to have fun with it. Little Lester is amazing, always use it. Because it can also stun enemies, it can do a lot of things. Notch of Purpose is amazing as well. And you'll see what I mean by that. So over here we have Inspire Courage, just because, again, I wanted my characters to be a little bit tanky, so they're not squishy. So if you make a mistake, or if you don't know what to do, or if you extend a combat for a few more turns, you will always have something to help you with that. Focus. Another good bonus to Ballistic and Perception, which will help your allies see their targets better. Testing Impression, again, just for the buffs, no respite. For the buffs. So basically, in 3 or 4 rounds, she can make uh, any character a superhero. Okay, this will be a little bit of discussion. Ebb and Flow. Why this? Because she gains an additional action point. Since she can buff, basically buff, debuff, move a lot, use the powers and other things as well. She will sometimes need the action point so she can, for example, if someone take aim and the other character will have voice of command and then you will use bring it down and then you can use notch of purpose and some other stuff. Again, it can be hilarious how much she can do in a single turn. Like example, like example she'll move in a corner, she'll drag an enemy out of cover. She'll move back, she'll give, take aim, and she'll give the extra turn, and then, I don't know, it can get a little crazy with this, so that's why ebb and flow. Plus, the perception helps with a lot of other things as well. Awareness is also pretty important to have in some situations, but mostly it's for the action point. Also, again, uh, okay, let's, let's move forward. Change vitality. I just like everyone to have more wounds. Fire Courage plus Strange Vitality. Problem was that Cassia would die a lot of times and sometimes if she got hit, everyone would hunt her. So, again, I just don't like to have glass cannons or buffers that cannot do anything. Most of the time she'll be looking at the enemy because of other skills. For example, Line of Sight on enemies is super important because she can reduce their dodge and their hit chance. So that's why Strange Vitality is there. Half of the open soul. All resistances have a minus 12 penalty. Much of purpose. Great. Guide of Souls. Why this one? Like I said, she will need to move a lot, and sometimes she can only apply the buffs if she's in a certain range. So you will always have enough movement speed to go anywhere you like. Perilous Ways. Much of purpose will do damage. Why I took it? It's great. Uh, this is kind of like the skills. Now let's speak about her items and skills. Well, not much to discuss over here. Perception, just because she has a lot of it, and willpower. 
Now this is a bit of a tricky situation because she kind of overrides a lot of character skills. She's good with awareness, she will always be the best at commerce. As you can see, coercion is still pretty high, but it's not 60. Commerce is good, she can replace coercion to a certain point. Lore of the Imperium is the best for her, but Pascal is also kind of out there. But persuasion, as well, persuasion is also very, 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 very high. So she's just too good over here. Ancient Terra Monocle. The lore of the Imperium test will depend on fellowship instead of intelligence, that's why it's so high. Psychic Body Glove. Eh, more good. Investigating. This is an important thing. I don't think people notice this, but if you use your power on an enemy, they have a minus 5 penalty to all of their characteristics until the end of the navigator's next turn. And the penalty stacks and is renewed every time the same enemy. Anyway, basically, he, the enemy will get a lot more penalties if it's attacked at the same time. So you can use, let's say, Notch of Corpus and a little stare on a boss. And that means the penalties will keep stacking until you the boss becomes like a normal enemy. Sniper Rifle, but I don't really use the Sniper Rifle because she doesn't have time over here. Medal of Alacrity. When you use bring it down for the first time with, on an ally, they gain an additional action point, which is amazing. Super good, free action points. What can you say? Fedora's Rosary. Commerce and Lore of the Imperium. That's why she's so good with that. 5 points to Persuasion, again, super nice. The range of the officer arc type abilities by oneself. And grenades just because sometimes you'll need them. Argenta. Oh, Sister Argenta. More or less like my character Dash, running gun, reveal and slaughter. But she has few, few recital. recital, recital. Uh, the idea is that she can have get some skills that will buff this one, but otherwise it's just 6 momentum points. You probably have to use it at the end of the turn, just remember that Uh, okay, it's only one per combat, so you might as well use a burst or rapid fire and then a burst and then you run and gun and then you have to use this at the end of the round. You'll have of course rapid reload, unpredictable, 8% crit chance. Again, I think it's based on agility or something, I forgot the idea. She has a lot of agility. Same thing for the boss, unfaltering fire, rapid fire, no longer reduces damage. I have to take that for my main character as well, but I keep forgetting to do it over here, I had some other stuff. That's why I said I made a few mistakes. You might as well take unfaltering fire on main character as well if he's built like mine. She's a medic, feel medic. Mind is finest, her bonus is 10 agility. Bolt. I also gave her swift movement. Why did I give her swift movement? Just because she's supposed to be more or less like my character, but she's supposed to be all over the place because she has high agility, which means she will act faster in combat and some other things. Balance. Power mastery, rapid reload, and all of these things. Now, the idea is that she's kind of like my character, a shooter type, but she also has a lot of other things going for her. of the way her stats are built so because of the stats she's actually a lot more different than my character as you can see she starts with a lot of agility and it's quite nice if you can improve her agility some ways because beyond ballistic skill she can really use a lot more agility what do you do with so much agility well her main skill will be demolition of course and that's kind of like it but i think i'll just give her a lot of medicaid as well because of her increased movement speed she can basically act as the medic of my team. Abelard will sometimes be on missions far away from us. So basically, Sister Argenta is the savior of our group. Just tactical gargles, which is chance to hit and critical hit chance. Great, amazing. And first a light carapace. I think I'll give her power armor at some point, of course. Normal bolter. Flamer. Well, I guess I didn't really show this, but let me... Let's go back a little bit. Flame Weapon Expert. Flame Weapons attack cost to minus one action point less. I give her that skill as well because if the enemy ever comes too close to us, we, we know what to do. Use the Heavy Flamer. <laughs> so basically the idea is that 
this character shoots a lot and she can handle a lot of enemies that come too close. She can also kill a lot of enemies. Basically, she can clear the entire screen of enemies. She doesn't use this very often, but when, when she does it, it's kind of spectacular. Let me see. Well, I guess I have a lot of medkits, but I don't see them now. Sorry about the break. Enjoy the break by drinking some water or some Coca Cola. Anyway, that's the matter. When the warrior uses run and gun, they get an agility bonus damage on the ranged attacks. What does that, that mean? That means agility bonus divided by 2. So agility bonus is 5 because it's the number divided by 10, so it's 5. But it will be, let's say, 60, so let's say it's 6. On the ranged attack. So I think this means she gets 6 extra damage on all of her attacks. So that means her burst attacks will be a lot more damaging and. Her crit chance will sometimes be a little better as well, so it's just a lot of attacks that hurt a lot more than my main character's attacks. And this one. She has a chance to gain movement points. Again, why is this important? Just because she will have three medkits and you get some... Medkits have two quality. I think there's the normal one and the large one. And they can be a lot more useful than anything, so... Just extra precautions so we don't die very fast. Abelard. Now, Abelard has a very, very long discussion to him, but I'll just reduce this as much as possible. So, his Endure, Taunting Scream, Breakthrough, Breach, Brace for Impact, and Toxic Needle because of the item. Interesting ring. I think everyone should get it. Now, he's supposed to be a tank, but I, later on I'll build him to do a lot more damage. Daring Breach. Fun, right? Right. Thick Skin. Damage deflection, the parry is also increased. His parry is 82. Tearing breach, parry and of course deflection. And the other one, just movement points. Hardened scars. I think this was a mistake as well, but at the same time... I think you... I don't see the idea of he will be wearing heavy armor as well, so his deflection will be quite high as well. So he's supposed to be a tank while dealing some damage, but not out of damage. He's also a proficient with Melta weapon, which is amazing. He's also a field medic. Navy officer. So he has the increased toughness, so that's why he's like that. I also gave him Grenadier, I also gave him Plasma Weapon Proficiency, Heavy Armor, Proficiency and Swift Movement. So, as you can see, he basically will survive anything, has good armor and can use a lot of guns, Melt and Plasma. I will give him at some point the Dual Combat Master and he'll be able to shoot both of his pistols at some point, which will be Melt and Plasma, which will be quite fantastic to see. And he'll be using a two-handed melee weapon, which will be a Thunder Hammer. Anyway, he'll be much better later on, but for now, he's just trying not to die. <laughs> He's kind of like a brave little warrior. Now, for the stats, as you can see, you will have to kind of like decide. It's either going to be ballistic, strength, or other stuff. But give him enough strength so he can wear the heavy armor. Ballistic will be increased a little later. Toughness is super important for him as well. And for his skill, he'll basically be our Carus and Athletics guy. Super strong in both of those. Nothing else other way. And he'll be wearing the Helm of Determination, which is for his Iconoclast. Basically, he gains Fellowship bonus armor. He gains bonus armor. And the, bon the helmet also gives him a bonus to Fellowship, which is not so important. But the idea is that he gets a little more armor. So as you can see, he heavy armor plus the Iconoclast helmet, plus the Deflection, plus the Endure, will make him super, super tanky. The point where he cannot really get damaged that much. And with Idira's skill, he cannot even get crit. First day manual, why is this on him? Simply because he can heal himself so good and so amazing. I'll have to give him Medicaid at some point, as you can see it's 40. That even if the enemies manage to reduce his wounds by a lot, he can still survive it. Okay, so well, again, I'm not sure what the better weapons will be later on, but for now he just uses a plasma pistol and an officer chase sword. He also has the plasma gun. You may wonder why, because this should be on Pascal. Well, I just like, to, again, this is for the fun factor, it's not so efficient, so normally he would just have the great sword. 
some other things, but for now it should be enough for him. Again, this is for the fun factor, later on he'll have a much better melee weapon, a big melee weapon that will smash enemies. Over here there will be two pistols, I'm curious if that build will work out or not. Case of the Oblivious, just so he has more toughness. Need a ring, an extra attack, we'll see why later. Closer Endurance. Whenever he gets injured or falls unconscious, the, the allies gain 1 to damage. You kind of get the idea. Whenever the, Ura, the, user, the wearer uses Endure, they immediately remove burning, toxin and bleeding. Get the idea. Same for that and medkits. I had a large medkit but I used that. So he's quite a character, isn't he? Now, Mr. Heinrichs. The idea of this guy is that he's quite strong in the beginning of the game just because he has a little bit of everything and can become everything. Defensive maneuvers, when the world attacks damage they gain dodge 3 times. Zero dodge. Hmm. Anyway, not so important. Fixed skin of course. A rigorous training. I'm not sure what I choose for him, but he also has shield medic so he can heal himself. Melta weapon, Lord of Xenos. Then skill Lord Xenos again. This is just his bonus. Antic powers, let me see what else I choose for him. Pyromancy. Pyromancy is not such a good choice, but I just like to use it because it's one of the skills that actually makes sense in the context of some of the stronger enemies like mid-tier enemies and so on. Dueling Master, as you can see, he can parry better, so in a way he's a much better melee character and he can buff himself and heal himself with Invigorate. More, more lore of the warp. He also has Biophysical Distortion, so he can outlast most of his enemies. He also has Destined, so the second armor increases by 5% at the start of every round of combat except the first. Now this was not such a good idea, but like I said, if the combat drags on, my characters will be able to heal and survive it. So just by the fact that my characters don't die, they'll be able to survive a lot more. Not much to speak about over here. He has a lot of skills that mostly depend on how you want to use them. Again, it's a lot of discussions, but... Go over here. Over here. He is going to be a lot better if you... It's the same discussion as Idira. He is much better if you use Infeeble. Or if you want to use him, this will buff an enemy. But again, it's... If there are 20 enemies, who do you debuff first? But you can also get this thing over here. Shield of the Emperor, which is amazing. Because it increases the deflection and the armor by... Side rating. And... The Resolve. But again, it's a bit of a thing... You can only use this once per round, so it's a bit of a discussion. Usually combat at this point of the game should only last for about 3 rounds max, so again, it depends on how you do things. Otherwise, like I said, Enfeeble, and that is very good. Hammer of the Emperor can also be very good. But again, it mostly is based on his primary skill, which is not that fun to use. Because he'll mostly be in the thick of combat. So his stats are very good, you should probably build him as a weapon skill specialist, so he is very good in melee. He has plenty of toughness and agility for a character, I mean his stats are pretty well balanced. Now, as for his stats, what do I use him primarily for? Well, Lord of the Xenos, of course, because that's what he's good at. But other than that, so this is the problem with this character, he does, he is good at a lot of things, but not exceptional at anything, so he'll be replaced by the Space Marine, of course. And right now, I, well, I guess it depends on how you view things. Eventually, most of the characters will be replaced by just pure combatants. So, it's fun to use by replacing Idira, but at some point, you'll also be replaced by the Space Marine. Take Officer Armor. Take Officer Helmet, I mean. So, again, depends on how, how you want to use him. But, as you can see, he can have very balanced stats with armor and dodge and deflection, so his can be very good. Also, it's kind of funny to use it. But it has a lot of penetration. With the precise last pistol, it can work. And over here, it just has the long last at last. Long last at last. All attacks of opportunity deal an additional agility bonus damage. It says 40, that's 4, so 4 extra damage with the attacks. You can also just specialize him to use the long glass and the long sword, the Renobi long sword. See this one. 
So you put that over there and the long last. So as you can see, he can be a very, very good character in many ways. Fellowship. I'm not sure why I would use this in combat. I guess I just have it over here because I didn't have any cool capes for him. Charge ability cost one less action point. He's actually much better at charging, so we should probably just give him the boots. There, that's a little better. I should have done that a while ago. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of a weird character because he can do a lot of things. He's kind of like a better Abelard in some ways, but in some ways he just... You, you have to specialize him in something, so you have to make a choice. I made my choices. He's more like a mid-tier character, so that's why he's like this. Again, I made a few mistakes and I shouldn't really have taken some talents, but... Eh, it's okay, we have a lot of debuffers anyway, so remember that... Uh, there's a limit to how much the enemies can be debuffed, so at some point you just want to take someone that can do more things and is more versatile. But at the same time, I don't know. Like I said, your character should mostly be using a very strong weapon and the other weapon should be utility based. Now, my favorite character almost, Pascal, I never really realized how strong he is. Let's look at this guy. This guy is a beast in many many ways. Now, you can build him a lot of ways. He's one He's truly one of the most versatile characters in the game. He can be melee, he can be raged, but I build him like a sniper. I think a lot of people don't see how good he can be as a sniper because he's an operative just like Idira. And Idira, well, I think the cycle should have had their own skill tree, their own starting skill tree. So analyze enemies, expose weakness, dismantling attacks, perfect spot, but also precise attack. The precise attack. I guess. It can build a tricky, so you have to see the enemy. I think I made a choice, but you also get the yeah, I guess five. Basically, a better crit chance if you use this. I shouldn't have chosen precise attack. I regret taking precise attack. I should have selected something else for him over here. I really think that was a big mistake from my part. But at the same time, he didn't really have anything else you can really use. Print analysis would have been a better one, but. Again, five more damage to the attack wouldn't have changed much. So this is a bit of a discussion over here, but if you don't know what to pick, pick precise attack because at some point this would be super useful. Especially if you if the enemy, for example, is jugged out of his cover by Cassia, and then you use analyze enemies, and then you just use precise attack. To reduce cover efficiency as well, but the chance can be super important. Everything about him is amazing and I just give him the medic and mecha dendrite just because I want someone to heal the back line and I also want someone to be able to heal, how should I put it, very reliably so without using anything. Again, it's a bit of discussion but I just like for him to heal as well. Passive learning is amazing, he needs to have it, sharpshooter of course. If they didn't move they gain ballistic skill and 2 damage for every 5 cells. So basically it can also work very well with Cassia's aim. So if you give aim and all of the buffs to this guy, he will kill an enemy at any range if you give him the long glass or any other good sniper rifle. Plus he can also crit. Perfect spot also helps him a lot with his cover efficiency, perception and ballistic skill. So he's, it's almost impossible for him to miss any shot in the game. It's very small for example in the reactor fight with Aurora. Perfect spot additional grants armor penetration to enemies that are 7 cells away or more. Something attack well, more or less the same thing. Not sure what this means. Whenever it attacks, anyway, it doesn't matter. Instant exposure, exposure costs direction points, expose weakness. Again, you'll use analyze enemies a lot, no matter what your character is good at, perception. Uh, you will have to use this a lot more because exposed weakness will decrease the target's dodge, parry, and armor. So let's say he has four, ten plus exploits or exploits or fifth. That's twelve, twenty-two percent less armor, which is huge considering how the game works with armor and some of its other things. So as you can see, you can debuff enemies so many times they'll be they'll be basically left with nothing. You can use melta plasma bolters. Does reject the flesh. So many good things, but sadly he doesn't have a lot of good armors in the beginning and he has very very low strength. We'll talk about that in a moment. 
think a lot of weaponry. Medic, 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 medic. I also should have not taken Medic and Medic and Medic and I should have replaced it with something else, but I'll do that at some point. Filtering... Uh, let me see what it is. Filtering protocols, it's called. I'll probably not find it because it's... Can I search somewhere? I don't know. Let me see if I can see it. <laughs> Sorry about this. I guess it's so hard to see sometimes the skills themselves because it's such a long list of things. That I think they should have changed this so the proficiency would have appeared in another screen or something. Okay, filtering protocols. Time Pascal uses plasma as melt weapons. He gains one action point, so that will be amazing, and he can attack a lot of times. The idea is to use Cassia's full momentum with him, with filtering protocols, to really gain action points. And he will be a beast if you buff Pascal and if he has filter filtering protocols, which are giving him a bit. Like, again, this is just because in the beginning of the game you don't even have a plasma weapon. You get a much later, and it's just too much. It's too valuable to have as a sniper to use as uh, anything else. Persistence of the Forge. In the stacking bonus to hit chance and dodge reduction against the enemy, they hit with a single attack. More or less the same thing. Forged purpose. Anyway, you kind of get the idea. He's too useful to have as a sniper in the beginning of the game to use as anything else. Let's look at his stats. I don't like this. So he has a lot of weapon skill which is amazing, but he also has ballistic skill which is amazing as well. So he can use melee attacks and ranged attacks with the same kind of proficiency. You can see he has the rebel sniper rifle, but this is way way later into the first chapter. At the end of the first chapter, so you don't really use it. He had the long glass. It has 18 range, this has 15. Plus this has additional hit chance. So not even miss attacks, so single attacks will be so powerful and devastating. He's intelligence based as well. I don't know, they just give Pascal too many things as well. He has 75 logic, so he's the best at logic. And he will have some lore about Xenos as well, in case you replace um, Heinrichs. Of course, take you will very very close to 100 now about his weapons and other stuff the when the warrior kills a target with an exploit using a single dead eye shot the nearest enemy in the case will not exploit the nearest mid enemy yeah, again not so useful but it's going to be a little more useful later on he has full investment uh, sadly, he cannot really wear anything else just because this will be the best option for him because he it, this armor will give him bonuses to armor. So 37 armor plus 40 on it will have to do for now. The problem with him is that he doesn't have a lot of strength, so we need to give him 45 strength so he can wear the better armors of the game because you cannot really increase logic beyond this. He also gets reject the flesh to take use again. It depends on how much you buff him. You I don't want to say anything more about this cat and he, the way he's upgraded and the way he works, but you'll just get much better stuff a bit later. He also has the hypnotizing plan that, which means single shot attacks will slow down the enemy. So yeah, imagine that the enemy cannot even reach you, so even if he doesn't die, he cannot reach you. Sniper gloves. Option crit chance to single shots and dead eye shots. So yeah, he has a whole so a lot of crit chance and some other things going for him, but the idea is that, I don't know. Sometimes he cannot really do a lot of things and sometimes he's very limited, but he works so well as a sniper. I showed you what I, I, what I would have changed about him. Okay, now this is the fun part. What will I choose for the second arc taps? Well, shooters like this guy in Argenta will always get Bounty Hunter. Idira will get Grand Strategy. There's not much choice over here in my opinion. And if you get Grand Strategy for her...
will be weird because you'll have uh, three characters with grand strategy. So I'll just leave her for last. I really wish I could use this one, Master Tactician, but when this is not worth it, just because Grand Strategist has a huge advantage. The Grand Strategist always start, acts first in combat, so these guys will act first in combat, so imagine that. Cassia can do so many things and she starts in the first round of combat. She of course will be a bounty hunter. This is a bit of a discussion. He apparently is a much better vanguard, but I'll make him an arch militant just because I like the versatility and I want to make him deal some damage as well. Yeah, and it's a bit of a discussion. For this guy, he'll be a vanguard absolutely because he doesn't have the same bonuses as Abelard and he doesn't have the same proficiencies. He doesn't have a lot of the other things as well. And he'll always be a vanguard. I'm not giving the skill for now, but just make a mental note of it. Oh, that's weird. I'm done game. Now for this guy, he would be a much better bounty hunter in my opinion, but I think he has to be a grand strategist as well. I'm debating it. To be honest, he's not, he's not such a good bounty hunter as I would have liked him to be, even though he's a great sniper and he can he can do a lot of things and deal a lot of damage with his sniper rifle and some of the other things, but that would make the game a little too easy and I still want to use him as a plasma destroyer. Plus, you need two grand strategists in your party all the time. Just because of the way they work. And I think the game is bugged. So, what do we have in our party? We we'll have one bounty hunter, two bounty hunters, one grand strategist, one arch militant just because I want to see if he's good or not. This guy will become a vanguard. He cannot really become anything else just because of the way he works. And the question is, what can she become? And this is the big problem of the game because some characters are so badly developed. So, assassin doesn't help. Bounty Hunter doesn't help, so it will have to be Grand Strategist as well. So yeah, kind of like enjoy your choices, but the game has very little choices as you can see. Now, what is the deal? Let's speak a little about the classes. The Bounty Hunter will basically be able to have hand down the prey. What are the skills I'll choose? I'll choose the first three over here, just because they're the more interesting one. Well, the bolt is basically another debuff to the enemy. Claim the bounty is an extra attack you can deal and you can get more action points back. Piercing shot is amazing just because it's a lot more damage. And if you hit someone marked as prey, it will always be a critical hit. So it's a way to always critically hit. Next attack during this turn. Well, I think, I'm not sure how it works. Again, we'll just have to see how all of this works at some point, but... It's very hard to guess. Also, let me show you some of the things it can do. Flay the Bolt. Which again, it will be a huge debuff if you apply it like that. Here's the armor. It's also super, super nice because a critical hit will mean that the target's armor is reduced by 5% or difficulty targeted. I think it can go up to 6. No, it's 7. But usually it's going to be 3 or 4, right? Right, more or less. So again, if you just hit a critical hit, the target armor is reduced. It doesn't say very clear, it's until the end of the combat and it stacks. 5 plus the target... So basically because this guy shoots so much and he will shoot... I don't even want to think how much he will shoot. He will destroy the target... The target's armor so fast to the point where the target doesn't have any armor. So. Most enemies or bosses will have no armor at the end of the first turn, no, no weapon skill, no bonus, no ballistic skill, and also no toughness because of the debuffs will apply to them. There are many other cool things about this guy over here. I should play the, play the bold. Here's Senrin is also very, very fun. Because this is also going to help us, so if you do the critical hit, 
Yeah, it's a. I think the bounty hunter is a little too powerful. I don't know why they put it like this or they made it like this. Because piercing shot is a guaranteed crit if it's marked as prey, and that's again just just a lot of armor reduced. A lot of armor reduced, and because of his perception, he'll always be able to hit. Uh, so that's for main character in Argenta. Let's speak about, of course, the grand strategist, which is for Pascal. Idira and Cassia. First, you'll be able to create a few zones, but the way I will, well, I guess it's hard to make it on Cassia because she will choose other things as well. Let me show you on Pascal because then I'll have to show you in Cassia. You will get kill zone stratagems just because the enemies. Basically, it helps you hit the enemies more. Don't call this for defense. Sometimes you need to use defense, sometimes you need to use attack. And also, this one to double the bonuses. The idea with all of this stuff is to basically improve them as well. The fortress zone. No, not that one. That one. Rerolls made by enemies in the kill zone stratagem I will have 15 penalty, which is amazing. Then you just have stuff like this. You'll have sniping zone, which again, if you use. <laughs> Sniping zone for the rear area, what you mean? But they get a critical chance, that means everyone will get more critical chance by the bonuses of these guys. So, fellowship and intelligence bonus. I'll assume it just mean his bonuses. He's also intelligence based, he'll be intelligence based at some point. So, let's say it's 6 plus fellowship. Let's just say it's 10. Divided by to 5% crit chance. Oh no, it's 3 plus that. So it will be 8%. Let's say it will be 8% crit chance for everyone in the sniping zone, which will be amazing. And then you also have fire at will. The first attack in the turn made by every ally in that area costs minus one action point, which will be amazing because everyone can debuff and do a lot of other things as well. So sniping zone and fire at will in the background will be amazing, plus some of the other stuff you can apply. Personal zone, they gain perception and agility, which will help them with dodging and hitting more. And a lot of other things, but yeah, generally that's the idea of it for him and Idira. Well, the problem is that the cycles they'll have to choose other talents as well, so this will be very hard to choose because at some point she will definitely 100% have to get Waking Nightmare. What is Waking Nightmare? Basically, as you can see, will power. Basically, the enemies will have a lot less toughness. So well, let's just make a small calculation. So it's, let's say it's going to be 7 to 14, 24% less toughness. So that means the enemies will have 25 less HP and you don't even need to do anything. They just need to not pass a certain skill check. A certain test. We also can have point of curiosity, so you have notch of purpose, and then you can have point of curiosity. The enemy closest. All enemies in a six cell radius around the target point. So this is four radius one enemy. This is all enemies in six radius. So that would be amazing. Also, you have spot of effort and some other really cool stuff so yeah it's going to be very hard to choose anything for her just because she has too many things that are amazing i guess i should have chosen point of curiosity already what did i choose i forgot about let, let me look back at it yeah i chose take aim definitely i should have taken air of authority or anything else i guess here I chose very good. I guess it will it would have been notch of purpose and then point of curiosity and next will be waking nightmare. Photo of apathy is also nice because it can immobilize enemies. But it's just a willpower test, and I well I guess you just have to debuff the enemies a lot more. And after that I'm not sure if you should get any zones, but maybe you should get a zone as well. You can see you have three, three choices over here, one, two, and three. So to pre 
it probably will be two cycle powers and again it depends on a lot of things as well the idea or the main difficulty of in choosing over here it will be that well i guess we'll have to choose some of the other stuff as well but you get the idea cycles will be all, will always be cycles no matter what and she will get enfeeble plus uh, the zones so that's why pascal will have to get the zone and the grand strategy just because cassia will have to get her powers as well so eh, anyway that's the entire thing see you next time bye bye